Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In the previous lecture, we covered the decision tree algorithm and we, um, we, we saw that we can actually apply decision trees algorithm in a pretty much the exact same way as we make, take decision in practice, which is basically by asking simple questions and based on the outcomes, we can say, okay, you belong to this class or this class and so on and so forth. In the random forest algorithm, it's kind of an advanced form of the decision trees. Okay, again, it's very simple, but it's, it actually achieved, it will help us achieve a better results and better classification accuracy. All right, so what do we mean by random forest? So random forest classifier is a type of classifiers, we'll call it ensemble algorithms, okay? So instead, in a nutshell, instead of using or relying on one decision tree, which is simply the exact, if you guys zoom in here, you will find this is simply exact same tree as we had before, right? We had, again, savings, more than 1 million, age, 45, yes or no. Then you come up with class, either class 0 or class 1, which is, are you eligible to retire or not? Okay? All right. So the uh, random forest algorithm simply combines multiple decision trees. So instead of having one decision tree, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to have a forest, in a, in a nutshell. So instead of having one tree, we're going to have, let's say, n trees, many trees, okay? And what we're going to do is that we're going to divide our entire training set into different sections. So we're going to say, let's assume that we have, for example, 100 data points. So what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, I'm going to select, let's say, randomly selected 20 points out of these 100 points, and I'm going to go ahead and train one single tree, all right? And let's see what class, what's the expected class we're going to be. And that we're going to call it, let's say, class might be class 1, for example, based on this specific 20 points, which is subset of the overall data points. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead to the, uh, like, again, to my main pool of training data points, which are, let's say, 100 data points. I'm going to select another random 20 points. I'm going to go ahead here and train another tree. And maybe the outcome of this, you know, specific tree after training said, you know, that maybe the predicted class should be, let's say, one as well. And I'll keep repeating this, just randomly selecting data points, kind of, you know, selecting like a subset of our training data and going here and training a new tree. And I keep doing this until I go ahead and train N trees. All right. And what's going to happen is, like what you're doing is you are kind of, you know, training multiple trees and you are combining the votes out of all these trees to come up with one vote. It's kind of, you know, the kind of a collective wisdom out of all these trees. And that's what we call it the majority vote. And that's kind of, you know, if more than one tree said it's, a, you know, the data points or that customer, for instance, belong to class one, then I'm going to say, you know what, the majority vote is class one, then that will be my final outcome. Okay. Again, think of random forest, it's kind of an advanced form of a decision tree. We're going to have more than one decision tree. Everyone will going to say their, you know, their opinion, okay? And we're going to get the collective wisdom out of all of them. And we're going to come up with one output that, you know, give us the majority vote out of all these trees, okay? Okay, that's pretty much the random forest in a nutshell. Let's take a look at kind of, you know, like a more uh, details. So... Let's assume that we have here our complete training data set. So we have a data set that, let's say, contain these data points, X1, X2, X3, X4, with labels of L1, L2, L3, L4. And what random forest technique we're going to do, it will simply going to create three decision trees. So simply put, we're going to train three decision trees, decision tree one, decision tree two, decision tree three, okay? using three different training sets. So again, this is the main pool. Here we have all these data points, one, two, three, and four. But what we're going to do is we're going to create three distinct um, training sets. First, we're going to select maybe point X1, X2, and X3. And that's we're going to call a training set, set one. And we're going to use training set one to train our decision tree one. And the decision tree one, we're going to say it's say, for instance, maybe class zero or class one. We're going to do the same for decision tree two. So decision tree two will be trained by training set two, which is in this case, we're going to be X1, X2, and maybe X4. 
And then we're going to have decision tree 3, which is trained by training set 3, which is consists of x2, x3, and x4. All right? And once we train these kind of three trees separately, we're going to do voting at the end. And that will going to be our final vote coming from our, you know, collection of, collect, uh, of wisdom out of all these trees. That's pretty much the random forest in a nutshell. So what's the advantage? Why are we doing this? The objective is that it overcomes the issues with single decision trees by reducing the noise. Or if you guys recall, um, um, we in general try to overcome what we call the overfitting problem, which is kind of, you know, when the, when the algorithm starts to understand or starts to kind of, you know, like focus on the details of the training data and forget to generalize, forgets the big picture. And that's why well, the beauty of Random Forest is that since we kind of develop different sets of training, training set one, two, and three, randomly, okay, we try to avoid this overfitting problem. We kind of get, get, try to get the average of all the prediction. So we cancel out any bias or we cancel out any overfitting. Again, that's from a very high level. We're not going to dig into the mathematics, but that's kind of, you know, the intuition behind it. So again, another note is com by combining votes, from a pool of experts, think of all of these as kind of experts, okay? Each will bring their own experience and background to solve the problem, resulting kind of in a better outcome. For example, let's say if you wanted, for instance, to buy a house, for example. One of the major advice that everyone asks you is to, okay, you know what, go and try to ask, for example, like many experts as much as you can. Maybe ask, you know, like colleagues at work, maybe ask, you know, your realtor friend, maybe ask, you know, like another professional realtor and pay him or something. So by, by asking so many people, everyone will come to the table. They will bring their own experiences, their knowledge, their, you know, their, their, all their mess ups in the past. And by combining all this, you can come up with a much better decision based on all these inputs if you only rely on one input, which is kind of a decision tree, which is kind of the older algorithm that we discussed in the previous lecture. All right, and that's pretty much the random forest in a nutshell. If you guys wanted to have or to go ahead and, and read more, if you go to Understanding Machine Learning, page 255, you will find a lot of reading material. And if you go to page 320 in the Introduction to Statistical Learning, again, if you want to download the books, here are the links. The books are free. You guys can access the books as you want. And that's pretty much all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, I'm going to go ahead and take two practical projects and we're going to apply decision trees and random forests to solve them from scratch. Best of luck and I will see you guys in the next lecture.